Welcome back, movie enthusiasts. Today, we're diving deep into the enigmatic world of Vanilla Sky, a film that leaves audiences questioning reality, identity, and the nature of existence itself. Directed by Cameron Crowe and starring Tom Cruise, Ken Lopecrass, and Cameron Diaz, Vanilla Sky is a mind bending journey that challenges our perceptions and blurs the lines between dreams and reality. At its core, Vanilla Sky follows the story of David Ames, a wealthy and charismatic publishing magnate who seemingly has it all. But his life takes a dark turn when a car accident leaves him disfigured and haunted by strange visions. As David grapples with his new reality, he finds himself entangled in a complex web of love, jealousy, and existential uncertainty. Central to the narrative is David's relationship with Sophia, played by Penelope Cruz, a woman who captures his heart but remains elusive, existing both in his dreams and in the waking world. However, David's past comes back to haunt him in the form of Julie, played by Cameron Dyers, a former lover whose obsession spirals into a dangerous obsession. What sets Vanilla Sky apart is its seamless blend of genres. Combining elements of romance, science fiction, and psychological thriller into a captivating cinematic experience. Throughout the film, director Cameron Crowe masterfully crafts a surreal and visually stunning world that keeps audiences on the edge of their seats, questioning what is real and what is merely a figment of David's imagination. But perhaps the most intriguing aspect of Vanilla Sky is its exploration of identity and the nature of reality. As David struggles to discern truth from illusion, we're forced to confront our own perceptions of self and the world around us. So, whether you're a fan of psychological thrillers or simply enjoy a thought-provoking cinematic experience, Vanilla Sky is sure to leave you mesmerized and questioning the very fabric of existence. A self-indulgent and vain publishing magnate finds his privileged life upended after a vehicular accident with a resentful lover. Incarcerated and charged with murder, David Ames Jr is telling the story of how he got to where he is to Maccabi, the police psychologist. That story includes being the 51% shareholder of a major publishing firm, which he inherited from his long-deceased parents. The firm's board, appointed by David Ames SR, being the 49% shareholders, who would probably like to see him gone as they see him as being too irresponsible and immature to run the company. His best bro friendship with author Brian Shelby. His friends with benefits relationship with Julie Janney, who saw their relationship in a slightly different light. His budding romance with Sophia Serrano, who Brian brought to David's party as his own date and who Brian saw as his own possible life mate and being in an accident which disfigured his face and killed the person who caused the accident. But as the story proceeds, David isn't sure what is real and what is a dream or nightmare, as many facets of the story are incompatible to be all real. The mysterious man in the restaurant may be able to shed some light on David's confusion. Tom Cruise stars as David Ames, a womanizing playboy who finds romantic redemption. When he falls in love with his best friend's girlfriend Sophia Penelope Cruz, reprising her role from the original film. Before that relationship can begin, however, David is coaxed into a car. Driven by an ex-lover, Julie Cameron Diaz, who turns out to be suicidal, Driving her car off a bridge, Julie kills herself and horribly disfigures David. Reconstructive surgery and the loving support of Sophia seem to reverse David's luck. But eerie incidents are soon making him question the reality. 
of his existence and his control over his life, even while he is suspected of complicity in Julie's death. David Ames takes all he has for granted. His wealth, his inherited publishing company, his good looks, his relationships, especially his relationships. It catches up to him when a friend or sometimes sex partner can't see their relationship the way he sees it. From that point, the movie takes a Lynchian twist that ultimately and literally pulls us into Ames' tortured psyche. David Ames, a tycoon's son who, in the eyes of many, is a spoiled child who has no realization of his wealth or luck. Inheriting his father's company after both parents were killed in a road accident some years prior. David meets a girl whom his friend brings to a lavish house party one night and instantly falls in love with her. Desperate to find out more about this mystery girl, he gets chatting to her. Unfortunately, a jilted lover is watching David at all times and plans her final plot. After surviving a car crash and having his face reconstructed courtesy of his jilted lover, David struggles to find out the truth when his dreams turn into reality, and what he thinks is reality turns into nightmares. He knows he wants the mystery girl he met at the party that night, but where is she? Who is she? Everything seems muddled slightly, until a doctor manages to repair his face. And life is back to the way it should be, together with his mystery girl, or is it? Questions need to be answered, but who is to be asked, and who has the answers? David Ames Tom Cruise drives to work, he finds the streets of New York strangely deserted at rush hour. With growing unease he drives to Times Square, and finds the entire city abandoned. He then awakens in his bedroom once again to realize he's only been having a vivid dream. Cut to David in a jail cell describing a dream to Dr. Curtis McCarvey Kurt Russell, a psychologist who has been assigned to him. David has been charged with a murder he cannot remember, and he wears a mysterious pale mask. He and Dr. McCarby discuss the events that led to his eventual incarceration. Following the death of David's father, he was given 51% ownership of his father's publishing company. The rest of the company is owned by a board of directors that David disparagingly calls the Seven Dwarfs. Each of them believed that he was next in line to take over the company after David's father died. David can have anything his heart desires, and nothing is beyond him. On the night of his birthday party, which also includes a conversation with a drunken Thomas Tip Timothy Spall, the company attorney and an old friend of David's father, David considered firing Thomas for what he believes is his incompetence as an attorney, but he has a change of heart when Thomas makes a sad confession. David's best friend, Brian Shelby Jason Lee, brings with him a girl named Sophia Serrano Penelope Cruz whom he just met at the library. Almost instantly, David and Sophia flirt with each other, almost completely ignoring Brian. However, Juliana Jenny Cameron Dias, a regular bed partner for whom David has no deep feelings, crashes his party. She stays distant but keeps a close eye on him the entire night. Once David realizes Juliana is there, he asks Sophia to pretend to engage in a deep conversation with him so that Juliana won't come near him. David and Sophia end up hitting it off. David walks Sophia back to her place, where they stay up all night talking. The next morning as David is getting ready to drive to work, Juliana drives out beside him asking how his night with Sophia was. Juliana makes David feel guilty about ignoring her and convinces him to get into her car. It quickly becomes apparent that she is obsessed with David. 
She starts driving recklessly, speeding through busy city streets. All the while insisting that she's deeply in love with him and berating him for treating her so casually. Fearing for their safety, he tries to get her to stop the car by telling her that he loves her. She drives the car off a bridge in an attempt to kill them both. Juliana did not survive the crash. David did, however, although his face and right arm are mangled. And he suffers blinding headaches due to the metal pieces holding his skull together. He spends a long time in isolation before deciding to take back control of his company and see Sophia again. She appears hesitant to be around him, and when they go on a date she brings Brian along. The date is a disaster as David drinks too much and makes Sophia increasingly uneasy around him. The three part ways at the end of the night and David ends up passing out on a sidewalk. It is morning when Sophia wakes him up at that same exact spot and tells him that she will stay with him if he can get his act together. From that moment on, David's life is turned around. His team of plastic surgeons is able to restore his face and he finds his soulmate in Sophia. David's newfound happiness is short-lived, however, when he begins hallucinating. He looks in the mirror to see his face once again disfigured. A mysterious man, Noah Taylor, turns up wherever he goes and tells David that he has the power to control the world. And one night he goes to bed with Sophia and wakes up to find himself with Juliana, who insists she really is Sophia. He grows violent, convinced that Juliana is alive and playing games with him. He is arrested and told by Tip that he severely beat Sophia, but Tip will have the case thrown out. Tip shows David photos of Juliana with a bruised face. But everybody, including his best friend Brian, tells him that it was Sophia he attacked. David breaks into Sophia's apartment and finds that every photo he'd seen of Sophia is now of Juliana. Juliana attacks him thinking he's an intruder but then apologizes while still insisting she is Sophia. She leaves the room and the actual Sophia returns in her place as if nothing unusual had happened. They begin to make love but while they are in the middle of the act he finds that he is making love to Juliana. In a fit of panic he suffocates her and then discovers he has just killed Sophia. When David is finished telling Dr. Maccabi his story he still can't bring himself to believe that he killed anybody. Dr. Maccabi, frustrated by David's failure to tell him anything meaningful that might help his case, tells him that he can no longer help David and will try to argue for temporary derangement. This odd turn of legalistic phrase is just one of many clues that in this version of David's world all is not what it seems. As Dr. Maccabi leaves, David sees an infomercial for a cryonics company called Life Extension. This infomercial involving a dog that has been frozen and brought back to life has appeared at several points throughout the film. David is entranced by the commercial, and Maccabi sees that there may be a connection between life extension and David's amnesia. Escorted by Dr. Maccabi and the police, David visits life extension and realizes that he had signed on as a client. He had opted for an extra feature called the lucid dream. This allows cryogenically frozen, clinically dead clients to experience an unending custom-made dream life with no memory of their physical death. David realizes that he is now living in the lucid dream and that the mysterious man is his technical support. The support technician explains that the lucid dream was spliced into his memories at the point where he passed out on the sidewalk after his night out with Sophia and Brian. But the dream went awry and turned into a nightmare. 
Since nothing he experienced after the splice was real, David realizes that he never murdered anybody. Dr. Maccabi tells him that the guilt he felt for the way he treated Juliana may have caused his subconscious to merge Juliana and Sophia. But it turns out that Dr. Maccabi isn't real either. He's just a character David created in his dream to be the father figure he always wanted. Most curious is the fact that Dr. Maccabi seems to believe that he himself is real and only reluctantly comes to accept the truth he had previously mentioned that he was. Going out with his two daughters for dinner after a session with David. But when the support technician asks him what are they your daughter's names, Dr. Maccabi has no response. Tech support tells David that in reality, he never saw Sophia again, and that Thomas Tip, the attorney that David considered firing in the beginning, had saved the company for David and helped him regain control from the board of directors. But David, suffering constant pain and depression following his disfigurement, committed suicide. In the end, technical support reveals an upgrade to the software which allows David to either be reinserted into the lucid dream with no memory of the nightmare portion or to be awakened in the present time, which is 150 years after he was frozen and live in the real world with a restored body. David chooses to be awakened in this future present realizing that everyone he ever knew will be long dead and his wealth will be worth far less. After one last lucid dream rooftop exchange with Sophia in which she vows to find you again he leaps off the skyscraper. Multiple memory images cascade frenetically through his mind as he falls. The final shot is of a brief whiteout rather than the blackout. Accompanied by the sound of a woman's voice telling him to open your eyes, and an extreme close-up of a single human eye-opening and staring into the camera. Here is not a single movie that blew my mind more than Vanilla Sky even after watching it for the second or maybe third time. Until half an hour passed, you understand almost everything that is happening. But then you get lost on purpose. The director wants you to get lost, just like Tom gets lost in his life. He drives you left and right, up and down, you're starting to lose your patience with the movie and then, hop, you're back in the driving seat again, why? Because, wow, you just understood something, you connected a few puzzling scenes, and you're feeling confident about the movie again. You feel for Tom, you are feeling sad like all of that is happening to you. Not in some movie that already lost you a few times, but managed to get you back in the last moment. The ending explains it all, makes everything so perfectly clear that many things leave you feeling pointless about the movie now, and that is why I don't like the ending. It is too SCIFI, too unreal and too supernatural to be implemented as an ending for this beauty, but I guess there was not a better option to end the movie than this one. It is too underrated, and that is unfortunate. It has suspense drama and Tom Cruise's performance is excellent. It is highly recommended. Thanks for joining me on this journey through Vanilla Sky. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth analyses of your favorite films. Until next time, stay curious, movie lovers.